it is another question around that sort of innovation journey. And a lot of people that, that I speak to uh, are often, they're worried about making mistakes. Mm. And, and I often talk about, um, actually, funnily enough, here, like, I'm just going to, I'm doing a, a presentation um, this week, and I'm just going to show it to you on the screen here so you can see. So there's a lot of problems that we have um, in the in the real estate sector. Mm. And I, I've tried to get as many P's as possible <laughs> on the presentation slide. So the six P's preventing the property industry from progressing. I mean, it's going to be a nightmare standing in front of, you know, several hundred people trying to say this. But procrastination, perfectionism, profitability, protectionism, problems and products. And it's, and it's, this, it's this perfectionism term, which mm. is a massive holdup um, within the sector. And I'd sort of like you to um, give me an understanding of, of perhaps... You know, what are the mistakes that you have made uh, in your sort of roles? And how do, we, how do we recover or how do we get the mentality that mistakes are, are okay to be made? Mm. So it's an excellent question. Um, well, interestingly, so I, I ask this question when I run innovation workshops. This is the question I ask at the end. Right, now you've all got to know each other. Can everyone stand up and talk about a time they failed? And the reason I do that is because talking about your own failures, particularly within your teams, signals that it, in the pursuit of innovation, failure is to be expected and we talk about it otherwise. We end up in the situation where we're escalation, escalating our commitment to losing course of action. So yeah. talking about failure is really important. That said... Um, I've never failed. No, I'm joking. Um, that says, I, you know, I did a whole PhD in the psychology of innovation failure. I still find it really hard to fail. You know, I... Am it's human instincts, right? I mean, you're programmed yeah. from, from day dot to succeed. And so it's, admitting failures and accepting failure is a, yeah. it's an alien concept. It really is, you know, and, and in it's, you get that feeling in your stomach. It's, you know, you, it's hard to talk about, you don't want to admit to it. So, okay, I have failed, certainly I've failed in the course of my, um, probably more so in the last year when I've stepped out of my role working for a bigger organisation where, you know, work was quite structured and it's, and it's harder to fail. It's also probably harder to mm -hmm really live into your potential in that kind of situation. So in the last sort of just over a year, I've been um, walking the walk a little bit more in the sense that I am now an entrepreneur and I am, you know, I have set up my own business. And I failed a lot. I failed on lots of different levels. I failed on, I think my biggest failure is around perfectionism. So yeah. I am not very good at asking for help. I think it comes from I'm the product of a single mother and I'm a single mother myself and I get on with stuff and I get it done. But in doing so, you know, I launched a course a while ago that I'm not very happy with because I hadn't sought enough feedback from other people before I launched it. And right. you know, this is one of the things that I espouse as the key to innovation success is that we seek feedback. You know, we don't go it alone. We, you know, innovation is a collective endeavor. And, you know, in reality, what happens is not that I don't want feedback, but I run out of time and I think it will be fine. So I think not seeking feedback is one of the big mistakes that I've probably made repeatedly and just trying to do it all myself. And but, but, isn't, but isn't that in and of itself, though, part of the challenge that people find? And, and just to sort of quote back at you, you know, you've got to seek feedback. Innovation is a collective endeavour. Isn't that the issue, that leaders in this field are either too proud to ask for the feedback because you know, they're, they're used to succeeding because, I mean, let's be honest, a lot of leaders are exactly that, right? They are successful people, which is why they're put into that position. And mm -hmm. suddenly when you're an innovation leader, and I think, oh, this, this could be quite an interesting angle. There are two sorts of what I would term in, in our industry, two sorts of innovation leader. You've got those which are appointed and those that are anointed. And you've got the appointed ones, which mm -hmm. come from a theory of innovation and they're used to perhaps they're used to failing 
Then you've got those which are anointed, which are the people that have sort of grown up in the organization, are successful, and they are the sort of the forward-thinking leaders of we need to change. And they're just not built for that role because they've never failed. Mm. So is that is that part mm. of the problem here, which is, you know, we, we, we can't, we can't accept that we failed. Therefore, we can't seek the feedback because if something's not right, it's it, it's a, a real sign of weak leadership. This in is their a eyes. really important conversation, and and okay, there are issues with not talking about failure, and there are issues with not not having failed. So I'm going to I'm going to start with the last one first. So if as a leader we haven't failed, and there are roles that are so you know where failure is not allowed and so you just don't you don't fail on any big level the thing about failing is that you know it's an old cliche but it's true we learn more from our failures than from our mistakes and 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 the added benefit of things not going so well is that with every failure we build resilience so with every time things don't go according to plan we become more resilient as a, as a result we used to think of resilience as being a trait that we were born with that we had or didn't have but the truth is you know if you've had a really tough time that's really rubbish for you and it's hard but it's okay because you really will grow as a result. You will, as, as long as you can give yourself the um, courage to kind of reflect and think about what you've learned, you will learn stuff and you will be stronger as a result. And then, and then, so this is this is the thing. Of actually, you know, some elements of failure are really good for you as a person, and they definitely make you a better leader. And then, you know, the other side of it is not talking about your own failures, and that's you're really missing the opportunity to engage with people. You know, we don't. I think often leaders feel like they've been given this position. It's a highly paid highly valued position and they need to therefore know it all and we just we never do yeah you're right so you know we we i think as as i get older what i'm getting much more comfortable with is being comfortable with the skills i have and really open about the skills i don't and that then opens me up to the opportunity to ask for help to bring other people in and guess what when we ask for help people are really pleased aren't they you know you, mm. it's nice to be approached by someone who says i don't know it all and i think your skills are a bit better than mine so please can you help me i asked the question of um i think you met him briefly once uh, a really a friend of mine who's a re really big entrepreneur and has had many, run many, many successful businesses. And I said, what's the secret of your success? And I got out my notebook ready to take loads of notes. And he just said, it's really simple, actually. I, um, I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. And I surround myself with people who are much better than me at lots of things. And I let them do it because they're yeah. better than me at it. And, you know, this is the... You know, a, a really great leader is going to be someone that that knows what they're good at, and and then also knows what the people around them are brilliant at, and lets them do it. Mm. And then we have this opportunity for people to thrive. You know, we are we are all at our best when we're doing what we're good at. And when we're doing what we're good at, innovation is much more likely to take off. We're much more likely to come up with creative ideas. We're much more likely to speak up about things. You know, you start creating this. We started this conversation talking about culture, which seems like this massive, unwielding, impossible task to change culture. But there are quite subtle and easy things that you can do to start making real difference to people. Although I, I might argue that probably one of the biggest challenges of, of uh, innovation leaders is that of ego. And, mm -hmm. and therefore, the, it always comes back to a mentality. And I, I, I've always been a big um, advocate for how ego has an impact on us as individuals in the sense that on the one hand, you're, you know, and to use your, um, your example, you've got 
in your case, and I know who you're talking about, you've got this gentleman who is, you know, very inspirational and absolutely knows his own self as to what he's good at. And he'll double down on that. And he's got the strength of character to be able to identify it. But on the other hand, he's also not only got to have that acknowledgement that he's not good at things, but he's also, to use your example from earlier on from um, Amy Edmondson's uh, research, he's got to be able to create the environment of safety and to use your uh, word earlier, again, a culture of fearlessness in the individuals that he's surrounding himself with, which mm-hmm. is ultimately comes out to trust in their ability. So that's where I find it fascinating when we talk about it almost flippantly that it's really easy to lead. I don't think it is because yeah. you have to have ultimate strength of character in you you've got to have ultimate trust in your abilities but you've also got to lack an element of ego that gives you the ability to trust other people around you and actually to find those people that are good at the things that you're not and then give them and create this environment that enables them to be completely fearless and for them to be inspired by you at the same time so Mm -hmm. it, it is an incredible aspect of theoretically it sounds straightforward but in practice because of characters mentalities egos and psychology it's a fundamentally difficult thing Mm -hmm. to create 